Hello, Steve White, Steve White's 89. Well, I want to talk about the backlash with Lil Nas, Nas X. Um, I was trying to research it, but I couldn't really get any real answers, so I'm just going to talk about everything. Um, you, you all know he did the video for Monteo, um, basically where he's taking on the threat that I think most gay people live with, that you're going to go to hell because you're gay, um, like you have a choice, like, you know, straight people can just not sin and they don't go to hell, but apparently we just born to go to hell, basically. So he was like, well, if I'm going to go to hell, I'm going to, I'm just going to rule hell. I'm just going <laughs> to pole dance my way down, lap dance the, um, the, 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 the king, Satan, Lucifer, into a stupor, and then I'm going to snap his neck and take his horns and basically rule hell. So, okay, I enjoyed the video. I thought it was good. Um, but right away with the video, there were some accusations that he actually stole imagery from another artist who did a song called Cellophane. And I've seen some shots from that, and they do seem to be mirroring shots in it. And apparently the choreographer for the pole dance section was the same choreographer. So it may not be a matter of Little Nas X copying. It may be a matter of um, laziness on the part of the choreographer who basically just sort of did the same routine. <laughs> just like, well, I've already done a routine for one person pole dancing, I'll just do what she did basically. Um, you sometimes find that with choreography and um, people who score movies where I notice it the most, you sort of notice the same sort of themes coming up from different movies and that, and they just tweak them a little bit and it's a bit lazy. So he, but Little Nas came out and apologised and basically acted though he was inspired by her video and that he respected what she went, went through to get those images on the screen and everything, which is probably the politically correct way of dealing with stealing it without knowing that he stole it, because he probably wasn't aware. I don't know if he actually watched the video and they had it had been any sort of real inspiration, but um, he certainly could see the similarities, and there are quite a few similarities. Um, it's also very different, but um, yeah. So there's that, and um, so he did the video, he released it about like a week before Easter, and I didn't actually make that connection. I'm like, oh yeah, he's kind of, he's really trying to bait and trigger the, the religious fanatics. And um, I don't know if that's a good idea. Madonna did that like 30, 40 years ago for like a prayer, and she's still dealing with the backlash. <laughs> um, but he seemed to take a play from the Madonna playbook and just be like, hmm, how do I be notorious and be a legend? I know, I'll do a... Um, a video that you know triggers all the Catholics and the racists and the homophobes and just get them all riled up against me and that'll cr cause a whole lot of attention, um, which he did. And I don't like I said I don't have a problem with the video. The only issue that I have in relation to the video was when people were attacking him because he was sort of a kid-friendly artist before with um, like Old Town Road and that. He was like, it's not my responsibility to babysit your children. It's up for you to to. to um, monitor what they watch. I'm like, well, that's true. But you established yourself as, like, youth-friendly. So people are going to let their kids watch your videos when a new video comes out from Little Nas X. They're not going to think, oh, I need to, like, screen this before my kids see it. So you established that. You participated in establishing that. So you kind of need to acknowledge the backlash on that. Because that is a little unfair because people basically trusted you. They liked you. They trusted you. And as far as they're concerned, you betrayed them by doing this... Um, um, blasphemous, offensive video, and that they let their kids all watch apparently because they didn't think something like this would come from you because of what you'd already established with the work and art that you already did. Although they didn't know you were gay and you were getting a bit, a bit um, OTT, so they probably should have had a little bit of a cute clue. But I don't think anyone was prepared for this. So I do, I will criticise him for that, but. Um, that's just a matter of putting it up a disclaimer or something, just, you know, so people can't say you didn't. So it's not that easy to um, deal with, and I think he should have. But um, the other issue is the shoes. Now, I think it's a stupid idea. Basically, they got Nike's shoes, put a little medallion on them, and um, changed the, the foot section, basically, where um, the sole, and they had their sort of logo in there instead of the usual Nike one. But they still kept Nike on there, and... They made it very clear that they were, you know, pimping out a pair of Nikes um, for the Satan shoe. Um, now, how they got the blood into the red in the sole, supposedly there's one drop of human blood in every shoe in the sole, 
which apparently came from the people that worked there, and they said, well, apparently it didn't take that many. You know, I think it was only six people donated blood or something for them to have enough to do it. They made 666 pairs. Apparently they sold out in a minute and a half, but Nike's suing them, and they've actually stopped them from selling them. And I'm like, well, you've already sold them. Those, how can you, how can they stop it at this point? Maybe they hadn't been sent out yet, but I mean, Miley Cyrus has her pair. So I don't know how true that is. I don't know how much of this is true. I didn't have the time to check all of it. But um, so apparently he's not actually named in the lawsuit, but um, Nike's really not happy that they are using Nike shoes and associating Nike with Satan and Lil Nas, which in, in all fairness to them, they didn't ask to be associated with him. They didn't partner with him. Um, kind of reminds me a little bit of, again, the Madonna playbook with Pepsi. Now, she got in bed with Pepsi. They got in bed with Madonna. They knew what she, what she was like as an artist and performer, but they didn't know the specifics of Like a Prayer until they saw the video, and then they freaked out and pulled all the funding because they were funding her Like a Prayer tour. And then um, she ended up being funded, I think, by Pioneer, and they called it the Blonde Ambition Tour, and it was no longer Like a Prayer Tour because they were trying to get away from that backlash and that. Um, there's a whole Pepsi campaign that was filmed that um, got dropped at screen like once. Um, I think it was time to to coincide with the release of the Like a Prayer video, and then I don't know. I, I don't know if they didn't see the Like a Prayer video, or if they just didn't react to it, which I'm surprised, or if it was when the backlash happened that they freaked out. Maybe they wanted some controversy, but not as much as they got. But um, it does remind me of all that. So I kind of feel like a little nuts. Nuts is just sort of. Um, just sort of being a gay man and looking at the Madonna playbook and go, hmm, what do I do next in my career? Um, which is fine. But I, I, do, I think Madonna's reacting a little bit because she's been putting out a lot of um, titty pictures and stuff. Um, I said titty with Ds. Titty. Can't stop saying titty. Titty. Titties. Um, she's, um, yeah, she, she's getting desperate for some attention and I think it's because little Nas is like, is sort of making a play with for her playbook, kind of like Gaga was. Um, I don't think she li don't think she likes that. I think she's like, look, I'm still here. That's my playbook. You don't get to play from my playbook. Don't steal pages from my playbook. And I hope I'm using all those terms right because I don't know anything about sports. But um, I find it curious that she seems to be getting. She's putting up a lot of photos with her with her makeup done and her filters on and her, her titties out, and she seems to be needing attention pretty bad. And I don't think it's a coincidence that someone else is getting her kind of attention because. Um, like he's getting like Madonna attention out of this. He's getting it's, it's like a Madonna-sized event, um, cultural event. But um, like I said, don't have an issue with the art. Don't have an issue with this, what he's saying in the video. Although a little part of me is a bit tired of gay representation only being one thing. Like all gays are like uh, feminine and have to act like women. Basically, you can't be a man or a sex of a man. You have to be a woman in order to be effed by a man. I kind of find that annoying, although I do get that people do identify that way, but not everyone does, and I think we all get lumped into the same boat, and we, the rest of the gays, have to deal with the shitstorm that, that the over-the-top gays sort of, you know, blow up. So that's sort of interesting. And also, the idea that Neil Little Nas X is basically portraying himself in a way that, like, a lot of people are saying, well, that's what women always do in music videos, they're expected to be half naked and pole dancing and, you know, lap dancing and all this stuff to be hot and basically to be hoes. And I'm like, well, I don't think it really helps to, to reduce men to that level. I think we need to help women aspire above being a hoe in a music video, not bring men down to the level of being a hoe as well. Because then we're all just a bunch of hoes dancing for the devil. And I think that says a lot more than I meant it to, but I think that says a lot. So... Like when Madonna did it, um, people would say, oh, you're just exploiting yourself. Like women were exploited for decades and now you're doing it yourself. You've got the power, but you're still just exploiting a woman. It just happens to be you. So you're not really achieving anything except that you're in power, you're in control, but you're just choosing to do with that power and control the same thing men would have done with you anyway, male producers or whatever, or, or Svengali's or whatever. And I kind of feel like Little Nas Next is doing the same thing with the gays. He's just sort of perpetuating those same sort of issues and... and I don't, I don't necessarily think it's good, but I get to some people it's empowering if that's who you identify as, but if you don't identify as that, you get dragged down with that. So I sort of found all that kind of interesting. I wanted to have a talk about that, but I'm nearly at 10 minutes now, and I've had my little rant. I think I'm going to stop there. 
Um, feel free to share, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think. Do you agree with any of this? I know a few people do because I got comments on my last little NAS video. Um, ultimately, I support him and who he is. Um, I just hope he's not bowing to pressure on the other side to be this type of gay and to force this kind of um, representation when a lot of gays don't identify with it and don't sort of want to be um, associated with it. Um, which is fine, um, but yeah, is, is that just internal homophobia, or is that, you know, legitimate? So that's a whole other video, but I'm going to go, because I don't want to get to 11 minutes. Um, yeah, bye.